Annyeong, I'm Chef Atulia. Today I'm gonna show you how to make my secret vegan kimchi recipe. So let's get started. First, we have to brine the Napa cabbage. And for the brining process, you're going to need some coarse sea salt. You can find this at any Korean grocery store, or if you can't find this, just go ahead and use any kind of coarse salt that you can find. Today I'm gonna be using a wet brining technique where I'm gonna take 14 cups of water in a large bowl and mix that up with one cup of coarse sea salt until it is completely dissolved into the water. I'm also going to set aside half a cup of coarse sea salt on the side for sprinkling onto thicker parts of the Napa cabbage as well as sprinkling on top. So here I have a five pound head of Napa cabbage. I'm gonna be making mak kimchi today. And mak kimchi means kimchi that's been cut into bite-sized pieces. There's also pogi kimchi. Pogi kimchi is kimchi that's been fermented in its whole head. So I'll be making a pogi kimchi recipe video once we hit Napa cabbage season. But for now, we'll be making mak kimchi. It's just as delicious. Take your Napa cabbage and go ahead and discard any leaves that are not looking very fresh. Cut your Napa cabbage into half lengthwise. I like to cut a few inches at the bottom and then go ahead and use my hands to tear it open in half. Then cut those pieces in half again. This Napa cabbage is not looking very good on the inside. Sometimes you can buy a perfectly good looking Napa cabbage and then you cut it open and there's some bad leaves inside, but it's absolutely no problem. You can just go ahead and cut away all the brown bits or tear them away with your hands. I'm also going to cut away the core. Then I'm going to cut the cabbage into about one and a half inch pieces. I like to have one large bowl to keep all the white thicker parts of the cabbage and another medium sized bowl to keep all the leafy more delicate parts. Some of the outer leaves are really wide so go ahead and cut it in half lengthwise then chop it up into one and a half inch pieces. On every layer of the white part, go ahead and sprinkle it with some salt. Continue with this process until you've cut up all of your Napa cabbage. Once all your cabbage has been cut up, go ahead and take the green leafy parts and layer it on top. Then pour in your brining liquid, and it's okay if your liquid doesn't completely submerge all the Napa cabbage because this is gonna shrink down and everything will eventually be submerged in about an hour or so. Sprinkle all the leftover salt on top. You really don't have to do much once you've got the cabbage and the brining liquid in the bowl. Gravity is gonna pull down most of the salt to the bottom of the bowl, and that's where all our thicker white parts are hanging out so they're gonna get more salt so they're going to brine at the speed that they need to be brining at and then the leafy parts will be just chilling on top and they'll brine at the speed that they need to be brining at you just leave this for two to four hours when you don't do this you're gonna be have to be like constantly like flipping your cabbage so I think it was kind of genius. While we wait for the Napa cabbage to brine, let's make the kimchi sauce. Into a small pan, add two cups of water, quarter cup or 40 grams of sweet rice flour or any kind of rice flour will do. Whisk until well incorporated. Then turn up the heat to medium. And you're going to cook this until the liquid turns into a thick rice paste. This is gonna happen very quickly, so keep your eye on it and whisk vigorously the entire time. Once your rice paste has formed, go ahead and take it off of the fire and let it cool off on the side. Peel and julienne 400 grams of Korean daikon. You can use Japanese daikon if you can't get Korean ones. Set aside in a medium bowl along with half a cup or 58 grams of coarse gochukaru. Gochukaru is a Korean red pepper powder. It comes comes in a fine and coarse grind. I like to use the coarse for kimchi. Try to use gochukaru that's as fresh as possible because sometimes I've seen people make kimchi with old gochukaru and their kimchi, it like turns brown. Into a blender, add 98 grams of de-seeded Fresno chilies. This is about four chilies. You can also use red 
red jalapenos or even red bell pepper will work here. Add 213 grams of chopped Fuji apple. This is about one medium apple. This will give our kimchi a natural sweetness. Add 44 grams of roughly chopped ginger. This is about a thumb size piece of ginger. Add two tablespoons of salt and one tablespoon of sugar. This is optional and go ahead and skip it if your Fuji apple was really sweet. Then when your rice paste has cooled enough, go ahead and add that into the blender as well. Blend this on high until completely smooth. Then pour this over your daikon and kochukaru and mix thoroughly. Then cover this up with saran wrap and our kimchi sauce is done. Now we just gotta wait for our Napa cabbage to finish brining. Koreans like to add like shrimp paste, fish sauce, onions, garlic. They think that all these things add flavor to their kimchi when flavor for kimchi really comes from the healthy bacteria plus time. It's been about three hours. Let's check our Napa cabbage. You'll know once it's done brining when you take one of the thicker white parts and it's become a little bit pliable, but yet still maintaining a little bit of its crunch. This is looking really good. Let's go ahead and rinse it out. You want to rinse and repeat about two to three times to make sure to clean off the cabbage as well as rinse off any excess salt. Once you're finished cleaning off the cabbage, go ahead and drain off any excess water and add your Napa cabbage into a large bowl. Then pour in your kimchi sauce. Mix thoroughly using your hands and I highly recommend wearing some gloves for this. Once all the napa cabbage has been thoroughly coated in sauce, now it's time to put our kimchi into our fermentation vessel. I'm using my special kimchi fermentation container and you can find this kimchi fermentation container online or you can find it at most local Korean grocery stores. I think kimchi just ferments better in a large airtight container like this. But if you don't have this, you can use three quart size mason jars that are the white mouth and you can pack down your kimchi in that. In whatever container you use, you don't want to fill it up to the max because the kimchi will expand as it creates gas bubbles and your container is going to explode. So make sure to leave a few inches of room at the top. Kimchi is a form of anaerobic fermentation, meaning that you do not want your cabbage to be exposed to any oxygen. So try your best to submerge all your kimchi under the kimchi liquid. I absolutely love my kimchi fermentation container because it comes with a piece that can press all the air out. You want to set your kimchi aside at room temperature away from direct sunlight for anywhere from one to three days. It's really hot right now. So it's been taking me about one day for my kimchi to be ready. And you want to pop your kimchi in your refrigerator before it reaches its maximum sourness. Otherwise, if you leave it out for too long, your kimchi is going to get way too sour and also it's going to get a bit mushy. So you want to pop it in the fridge once it's reached at about 60 to 70% of its flavor and sourness. Then your kimchi in the refrigerator is going to keep developing its sourness and flavor. I think about after two weeks in the refrigerator is when it's ready and all the flavors have had a chance to meet each other and marry each other. Okay, one kimchi don't is when you're fermenting the kimchi at room temperature, do not constantly peek at it and open that jar or container because this is anaerobic fermentation. Constantly opening it and introducing oxygen into the good bacteria environment, they're not gonna be able to do their job properly. So if you keep opening it and closing it, opening and closing it and trying the kimchi here and there like throughout the day when you're fermenting it multiple times a day, then your kimchi is not gonna taste very good. So now time for the taste test for my kimchi. I'm actually gonna eat dinner right now because I'm starving. This is my barley bibimbap, my favorite meal right now. If you wanna see a recipe for this, go ahead and comment that in the comment section below and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Here's the kimchi. This I made probably a week and a half ago. Moment of truth. Mm, 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 mm. I would say this is like the perfect amount of sourness for me and the kimchi because of the brining technique and because I've fermented it just to like the right timing, it's maintained its crunch. 
음. 음. 오, 너무 맛있어. 완전 시원해. It tastes so refreshing, and the flavor is so clean. It's the best kimchi ever. Mmm. It's gonna go so good with my bibimbap. I made this really, really yummy sauce. It's so good. I think it's the best bibimbap sauce ever. And you just like mix this up with the kimchi, and it's so good. Mmm. 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 Kimchi, I'm going to buy it. I think I need to have another bowl. <laughs>